and when I say water, I mean not just rainfall, I mean humidity and soil moisture content and what irrigation we are able to do. But it all makes crops more or less susceptible to pests, depending on their preferences and the pest preference. So we're going to talk more about that when we talk about diseases on Thursday, uh, when we talk about uh, growing fruit and growing vegetables Friday morning. But it's another one of the details we want to focus on. Plant competition, we've already really started to discuss this. We'll discuss it more on Thursday, but we want to pay attention to who the poor competitor crops are and who the good competitor crops are because we don't need to have everything weeded the same way. We can weed selectively, we can choose our ground cover, and we want to choose it based on ecological function if we can rather than simply saying, oh my god, we can't have anything competing with our crops. And we discussed this a little bit. The next important agroecosystem detail is to think about geology, slope, aspect, soil type, and drainage. And we talked about soil color, but it turns out that in most cases, not all, but in most cases, soil color is a kind of good indication of the soil parent material and the drainage. So almost always dark brown means a high organic matter content. And I'm going to bring in uh, our, our sifted soil, uh, and then we can play with it a little bit tomorrow too for our class. But you'll see, you'll see the color on it, why, I was so, why we were both so excited, even though it was low soil fertility. We knew that at one point, <laughs> It had had high organic matter content. Dark peaty soils, remember I told you the soil in eastern Oregon or western Oregon that was 10 to 12 percent? It was black. So high humus content. And we'll and, talk and more about. Soils can oftentimes have been anaerobic. Exactly, exactly. Black soils, and in fact, the presence, uh, let's see, so if, if you have yellow color or or a black with yellow streaks, anaerobic. And you can also kind of smell it, too. So red, the presence of iron, so phosphorus could be less available to your plants. High clay content, high iron content. We'll talk more about this tomorrow when we talk about uh, soil nutrients. Yellow and black, really black. Uh, moist conditions and poor water drainage. And then if you have kind of light grayish streaks through the soil or almost bluish or greenish streaks, again, poor drainage and possible water logging. So the soil is not 100%, but it can be a nice indication of what you might be looking at. General soil pH, so our, our, the soil that we start with. Most crops really want to have a pH between 6 and 7, but some will be more tolerant, and those are the ones we might want to think about if we are either a higher pH or a lower pH. So for those of us here out west where we tend to have the higher calcium, higher magnesium, higher pH soils, uh, asparagus, beets, cabbage, muskmelon, sweet corn, pumpkins, tomatoes, peas, summer squash, and spinach don't have a problem. In fact, I've never grown such beautiful spinach as where we are in Oregon, where we have really high calcium rates. And in fact, when we talk about, we'll talk about this tomorrow, but for those of you who already know, we have 85% calcium when we talk about cation balance. And I'll talk about this tomorrow. So higher pH, some of these plants will actually grow better. I think actually harder is growing back east or in certain areas where the pHs are lower. But there are some crops that will tolerate a pH less than 6. And here they are, sweet corn, pumpkins, tomatoes, snap beans, carrots, cucumbers, parsnips, peppers, eggplants, and watermelons. You notice that some of those are in the same category. So there's a nice tolerant crop. 